Hi, fourth graders, welcome back. This is Miss Nichols again for your Making Meaning lesson. Welcome to my classroom. I do not have any students with me currently, so I do have Panther, Blake, and Caicos, my cats, and Simba the Little Lionhead Bunny, who might join us at some point during this lesson. Who knows? Hoping that you are able to be meeting with your teacher regularly online. I know that they miss you. We all miss our students and our classrooms, uh, but so glad that you could join us here today. Let's get started. Before we get going on our lesson, let's take a second to figure out the materials that you'll need. If you have a district packet, that's great, but if not, uh, just a regular piece of paper, something to write with a pen or pencil will work great. And of course, you're going to need a turn and talk partner. Remember that your turn and talk partner can be someone you have at home, maybe somebody in your family, it could be a friend, um, maybe on the phone. You can talk to your pet, a pretend friend. You can even have a pretend conversation with one of your favorite celebrities. Just make sure that as you're sharing your thoughts and your ideas today that you share in whatever language is most comfortable for you at home. For the past couple of weeks, We've been thinking about important ideas and supporting details in a couple of other books. We had Flight, which was the story about Charles Lindbergh, and a picture book of Amelia Earhart. And we know that determining important ideas and supporting details are really important comprehension strategies because they help us to think about what's the most important parts of a book that we want to remember. And we also know that this is important because summarizing depends on being able to identify the most important ideas and that we need those in order to build a summary. Today we're going to reread The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, written by William Kumquamba and Brian Mueller, uh, illustrations by Elizabeth Zunon. And as we're reading today, I'm going to stop several times. I'm going to ask you to think about what are the most important ideas in the section of the text that we just read. In a small village in Malawi where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room, which planes passed over the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. We're gonna pause right here, spend a moment thinking about this question, and then you'll turn and share with your turn and talk partner. What is most important to understand or remember about what you've heard so far? When we think about this part of the story that we just read, you may have said something about William's village had no money for lights. You might have also said that at nighttime, William spent a lot of time dreaming about building things and taking them apart. You may have said something different as well. That's okay. Okay, let's continue reading. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beans, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention to where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut your foot off. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. All right, 
Let's pause here. We're going to think about the question again, and you'll share with your turn and talk partner. What is most important to understand or remember about what we've heard so far in this section? So in this section, we learned that during the daytime, William spent a lot of time wondering and maybe even daydreaming about how trucks worked, what made them go, and gave us some insights about who he is as a character. And then there was also the part that um, got a little bit more serious. And we learned that the people of Malawi began to starve because there wasn't enough rain to keep their crops growing and healthy, and they began to run out of food. Let's continue with the story. Soon William's father gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day, make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money also disappeared with the rain. Pepani, his father said, I am sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks, he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. Let's spend some time thinking about what are the most important things to understand and remember about this section of the text that we just read. I want you to think for a moment to yourself and then go ahead and share with your turn and talk partner. So what were some of the things that you talked about and shared with your partner? Maybe you said something about William's family not having enough food and they could only eat once a day. You may have also talked about the fact that William had to drop out of school because they didn't have enough money. And he was really sad about that as he watched the other students go off to school. Maybe you had some other thoughts. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks, how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan, a giant pinwheel, something to catch magic. Slowly, he built the sentence, windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground, sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green, even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered. This windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Magesti ahem fepo, he whispered. I will build electric wind. Okay, it's time for us to pause again and think about what is the most important part to understand or remember about the section that we just heard. Just to take a moment to think about it, think to yourself, and then go ahead and share your thoughts with your partner. Do that now. So what were some of your thoughts about that section? Maybe you talked about the fact that William went to a library that he remembered and that with the help of a dictionary, he was able to read and understand about how a windmill 
could produce electricity and pump water. And he began thinking and dreaming about how that might be used to help not only his family, uh, but also the people in his village. What were some of your other thoughts? Let's keep reading. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like rusted treasures in the tall grass, a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, this boy is Masala. Only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps and plastic pipe, even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered, while chickens squawked and dogs barked and neighbors shook their heads saying, What's Masala doing now? His cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Mulibanji, they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, Bring it up! While the boys tugged and heaved, the, a crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Okay, time to pause again and think about what is most important to understand or remember about the section that we just heard. We're gonna spend some time to think in your own private brain. Spend some time thinking about that. And when you've got your idea, please turn and share that with someone at home. So what were some of the important ideas that you remembered from this section? Maybe you talked about that William began collecting pieces of junk to build a windmill that he learned about at the library. And the villagers began to think that he was masala or crazy because he was just collecting random pieces of junk wherever he went. You might have also talked about the fact that his cousin Jeffrey and his best friend Gilbert decided to help him build the windmill. Let's continue our reading. Like always, it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun around. With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. Wakita Buina, a man yelled, well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground creating food where once there was none. Magesti a mfepo, electric wind can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. Okay, that was our last stop. Let's spend some time thinking about this. What is most important to understand or remember about this last section that we just read? Spend a moment thinking about it. When you've got your ideas together, please go ahead and turn and talk to your partner. And please remember to share in the language that feels most comfortable to you at home.
what were some of the most important parts that you remembered from that section and shared? Maybe you talked about the fact that William was successful in building a windmill and he was able to use the electricity from that windmill to turn on a light and provide light for his village. You may have also talked about the fact that in that moment, he began dreaming beyond that about building another windmill uh, to provide water for the crops and to be able to feed not only the people of his village, but all of the country of Malawi. We've created quite a list of the important ideas from the boy who harnessed the wind. We'll continue to work on our skills of identifying these important ideas and then to use them to build a summary of the book that we just read. Sharing our ideas with others is a really important way for us to think more deeply about the text that we read and hearing thoughts from others that may or may not be the same as ours sometimes help push our thinking, whether that's in a full classroom with all of your classmates or whether that's at home with a family member. It's important for us to think about discussing our opinions respectfully. So I wanted us to spend a moment thinking about when people disagree with you, how do you like them to tell you that? And the other question is, how can we make sure that we are, we can disagree respectfully during our discussions? Please think about those for just a moment. You may have said that you would prefer someone to tell you in a nice tone that they have a different idea than you do. Um, and you may have also thought about what we can do to make sure that we're respectful. And part of that is listening to others and really trying to understand their thinking and just to be okay with saying, hmm, I have a different idea, but to be sure that we're listening and paying attention to what others think. That's the most important part. We read The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind for a second time today and did some much deeper thinking about the story. Last time, we really just were trying to understand what was happening with William. And today we spent some time really thinking about what in the story were the most important things to hang on to, to focus on, those important ideas and supporting details. We know that this is such an important comprehension strategy because it helps us to remember the important parts, but it also is going to help us as we think about building summaries, which we know help us to explain what we understand about a book and to communicate that with others. So we will continue that work, but now it's time for IDR. For IDR today, you're going to need a just right book. You're gonna read for at least 30 minutes. And as you read, I want you to practice what we just did today, which is stopping uh, every so often, maybe every 10 minutes and thinking about the important ideas and the supporting details for each section as you're reading. For those of you that were here for the last lesson, you know that I introduced a book called Baseball in April by Gary Soto. This is my IDR book, and it's actually a book of a bunch of short stories. And I'm going to model for you just a little bit how I might do my IDR thinking about the important ideas with this story. So this section is called Baseball in April, which is actually the title of the book. And I'm going to focus on what I think is the most important part in this section that I'm going to read. Baseball in April. The night before Michael and Jesse were to try out for the Little League team for the third year in a row, the two brothers sat in their bedroom listening to the radio, pounding their fists into their gloves, 
and talking about how they would bend to pick up grounders or wave off another player to make the pop-up catch. This is the year, Michael said, with the confidence of an older brother. He pretended to scoop up the ball and throw out a man racing to first. He pounded his glove, looked at Jesse, and asked, how'd you like that? I'm going to stop here in my reading and one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm just starting this part in Baseball in April, again a short story within this book, Baseball in April, and one of the things that seems important in this part is that this is the year. So these two brothers are obviously very excited. Um, they are trying out for the Little League team for the third year in a row. And this idea that this is a year makes me think that maybe they didn't make the team in the past. So I'm thinking that that is pretty important. So it is time for you to head off in your own book and to do that same work. I am really happy that you were here with me today and looking forward to seeing you at the next lesson. Thanks. Don't forget, if you're running out of books to read, there are some online books for students. Please visit the SPS website, select the Student Family Portals, and click on the Academic Tools, where you'll find a list of different sites that have some options for student reading. Mm -hmm.